Well, it's time to study the Word of God again. We're in the book of the Song of Solomon. Uh, back home today, finished a revival meeting last night. And here in my study, I have access to my big Bible. I like it. Uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verses 14 through 17. Chapter 2, verses 14 through 17. I usually employ one of these little uh, cards to display the text. I cannot always tell how clearly it shows up until after I have taught, recorded, and uh, looked at the video. Here in verse number 14, O oh my dove, that Solomon speaking to the Shulamite, O oh my dove. Now I want you to notice where she is. Thou art in the clefts of the rock. Wow. In the secret places of the stairs. And then Solomon has a request of her. Let me see thy countenance. Let me hear thy voice. For sweet is thy voice and thy countenance is comely. And then class, I believe she responds, the Shulamite responds to her Solomon. Take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines. For our vines, see, she is his little uh, vineyard. She is his little Little loving vineyard for our vines have tender grapes. And the hour there, she might be saying, Solomon, what's mine is yours. Our vines have tender grapes. Oh, she's going to testify about him now. My beloved, that's what she loves to call him. My beloved is mine. And I am his. He feedeth among the lilies. Now we're not talking about vineyards and grapevines. We're talking about lilies. Beautiful lilies that uh, grew in great proliferation throughout the Holy Land. Until, verse 17, until the daybreak and the shadows flee away. She says to him, turn, my beloved, and be thou like a roe or a young heart. These are members of the deer family, a roe, masculine members, or a young heart. That's how we know she's talking to him up on the mountains of Bether, Upon the mountains of Bether. I guess you could read that text and say, Preacher Bagel, I don't think I'll ever understand that one. And oh my, that's the beauty of the Word of God. David gave us a prayer in Psalm 119. Here's the prayer. Lord, open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy word. In spirit, we ought to pray that every song of Solomon. Lord, open my eyes that I may see wondrous, thrilling, marvelous. And the little Hebrew word there for wondrous things is spelled P-A-L-A. -A, and it means at times hard things, difficult things out of thy word. Oh, I can't wait for us to jump into this text into this narrative for indeed it certainly is that it tells a story he talks to her Solomon talks to the little Shulamite young lady but it's a picture 
of Jesus talking to the church. Oh, my dove. Oh, my dove. Now, here's the Lord calling his church a dove. Uh, earlier in the Song of Solomon in previous lessons, he said to her one day, Oh, honey, thou hast dove's eyes. Thou hast dove's eyes. But now, not only dove's eyes, oh, my dove. Doves are beautiful birds to me. I mean, as the sunlight shines upon their bodies, there's an iridescence, just gorgeous. If you ever see what, uh, the church to Jesus Christ, beautiful, iridescent, glowing. Uh, uh, and uh, in the sunlight, even more so, and Jesus is the sun of righteousness, the Son of God in his eyes were beautiful. Doves. Oh my dove. You will never see okay. You will seldom see one dove without seeing two. They are monogamous. Let me get a better word. They mate for life. The little dove is a picture of faithfulness. And oh, when the Lord looks at us. He appreciates us being faithful to him, not following some other God of this world, selling out to him, trying to be steadfast and unmovable, and then in flight. Oh, their quick fleet of flight. Oh, one of these days, oh, my dove, I'm going to be out of here. The trumpet of God's going to sound the voice of the archangel and I'll be, I'll be out of here. Plus this, the dove is a clean animal, pure animal. It, uh, Noah's Ark gives us that illustration. It will not eat dirt and uh, our, 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 our dead animals. It, it will not do that. Oh, the church is to be clean, pure, loving, not the world. Isn't that lovely? Oh, my dove. And then he says to her, thou art in the clefts of the rock. Thou art in the clefts of the rock. That little, the word for uh, clefts, C-L-E-F-T-S, comes from a root verb that means to hide away. To hide away. Uh, it means uh, to, I got my note right here, to take refuge. You are in the clefts of the rock. Let me preach this one way, then I'm going to teach it in a slightly different way in a moment. And uh, I hope it'll be a blessing to you. Here's the church, the dove, his love. She's in the clefts of the rock. The song leader wasn't far off. He hideth my soul in the clefts of the rock. Jesus is a rock. Can I get an amen there? He's a rock in a weary land. He's the rock of ages. He's the rock that is higher uh, than I. And uh, I'm hidden away right now in my Savior. I am, I am uh, in his arms, in his hands, in, his, uh, in the clefts of the rock and I feel, feel pretty happy. I feel pretty secure in the clefts of the rock, in the secret places of the stairs, in the secret places of the stairs, secret places, a hiding place, a hiding place. Does anybody believe Jesus can be a wonderful hiding place? I think it's Proverbs 18.10. The name of the Lord is as a strong tower. The righteous can run to it and be safe. Oh my, the secret place of the Most High, the psalmist writes, abiding under the shadow of the Almighty in the secret places of the stairs. And uh, the idea of stairs going up. A step at a time, the stairs. That implies that in Jesus, 
my Savior, have me memorized, I can grow in the grace of God. I, I can add that. There are 15 Psalms in the book of Psalms consecutively. They all occur together called the Psalms of Degrees. Brother Bagwell's got a nickname for I call them the Stair Step Psalms because those 15 Psalms, Psalm 120 through Psalm 134, those 15 Psalms beautifully outline God's plan for spiritual growth in our lives. That'd be a good study sometime, class. Spir the stair steps of spiritual growth to the glory of God. So he's loving her. He's admiring her, calling her a beautiful, gorgeous little dove. And then he's recognizing she has placed herself in his hands underneath her or his everlasting arm. Then, then he asked this of her. Let me see thy countenance. Let me see thy countenance. And the word for countenance, it is spelled M-A-R-E-H, mare, and uh, it means 35 times in our Bible, appearance. Appearance. One scholar last night, well, at 4 o'clock this morning, I was studying this, said that uh, this word countenance can also mean form. Figure. He he not only enjoys her eyes, he enjoys every bit. Christ enjoys every bit of the church. Oh my, he loves the church. He said, if two or three of you will get together, I'll be there. I'm coming. I, I'm a, let me see thy countenance. The devil will tell you you're ugly. The devil will tell you you're a hypocrite. The devil will tell you you're 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 not uh, uh, desirous in his eye. But I. I for, for I want to hear your voice. L let me get it in order. I'm getting a little confused. Let me see thy countenance. Let me hear thy voice. Class, did you ever think about the fact that Jesus enjoys hearing our voice? I believe he's pleased when we pray. Malachi 3, that chapter ends with a little discussion. It says, yonder are some godly men, and they're talking to each other. And they're, they're magnifying the name of the Lord, speaking together of the name of the Lord. And it says the Lord took note. The Lord's writing some notes about it. Got a little notebook. Let me hear thy voice. And then he adds for sweet is thy voice. The word sweet means uh, twice to be pleasant. Oh, honey, your voice is so pleasant. How long has it been since you've spoken with him in prayer, in worship, told him how much, how much you loved him, and thy countenance is comely. It is comely, uh, becoming. Very, very appropriate. Very, very aesthetic. Oh, how he loves her. Mm. Mm. Let me hear thy voice. Let me see thy countenance. Now, there is a second way that I want to apply thou art in the clefts of the rock. Obviously, some remote place. Thou art in the secret places of the stairs. She is going through a, listen to my word, rocky time in her life. She is going through a difficult time. Uh, these rocks, these hard places are symbolic of the problems, the difficulties, and the trials we face from time to time. And when I'm going through a hard time, oh, it thrills me to say it. When I'm going through a battle, my Lord knows. He knows when I'm in a hard place. He knows when I'm going through difficulties. He knows when the devil wants to sift me as wheat. And he says, cry out to me. Oh, my. Let, let me hear your voice. 
Ask me for strength. Ask me for help. Ask me for guidance and direction for sweet is thy voice. And I want to see you. I, 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 you're in a hard place, but I know where you are. I know what you're going through. He always knows. He always knows. Beautiful, beautiful verse. He invites her to closer communion and sweeter fellowship. Now look at verse 15. And uh, there is some discussion in the literature, in the textbooks, about who is speaking. In verse number 15, Brother Bagwell has come to the conclusion it is the young lady. And, I, and I'll, I'll give an application and show you why I believe it in a moment. Take us the foxes. Take us the foxes. Oh boy. There are some foxes over there in the vineyard. I guess I need, well, I read the whole verse to you. Take us the foxes, the little foxes. They love to spoil the vines. We learned early on in chapter one of Song of Solomon, her brothers have been mean to the Shulamite. They made her the keeper of the family vineyard. That's how she got so darkened, blistered, and burned by the sun. And then she says this, they made me keeper of my father's vineyards, but my own vineyard have I not kept. That does not mean that she owns another acre over here and it's her. She's talking about herself. She's talking about her body, her spirit, her soul. And uh, there's an enemy of every vineyard in the Holy Land, those little foxes. They play. They uh, will break the little tender vines. They love to eat grapes. I read last night, and they would, uh, they lead up a crop. If you take us, that verb take means to seize, lay hold of. Take us, the foxes. Remember that day? Jesus called Herod a fox, sneaky, sly, destructive. Herod had a role in the death of our Savior. Take us the foxes and watch this. The little foxes. The little foxes. This is not a sermon against wolves. There are some of those in the Bible. Foxes. Little foxes. And uh, those little foxes will spoil the vines seven times that word spoil is to destroy to ruin they will ruin the vines because our vines she's talking about herself lord i'm your I, i'm your vineyard lord you just come visit anytime i want to have sweet fruit and i want the blossoms to be fragrant to you uh, i belong to you everything i have is yours. That's the idea for our vines. It's her self, the church. But she says our. She makes it possessive and plural. Honey, it's yours too. Look, look, look. I, I, I think I can explain. She just said, what's mine is yours, honey. What's mine is yours. Our vines have tender grapes. Our vines have grapes that are yet developing and, and yet maturing and yet mellowing. And uh, we want them to come to maturity and fruition. Our vines have tender grapes. Let me show you what's happened. The closer she has gotten to her Savior, the closer she has gotten to her bridegroom lover, the more aware she has become of the little foxes. Now listen, class, here's how I'm going to apply of the little sins in her life, of the little blotches in her life. There are Christians who live five, ten years with sin in their lives, and they never get close enough to God to realize it. To do, Yeah, but preacher, it's such a little thing. Don't get all worked up. The little foxes. 
Oh, everybody knows you deal with the big fox, the little foxes. You don't know even about the little fox. Search me, oh God. Know my heart. Try me. See if there be any evil or wicked way in me. You don't pray those kind of prayers. You don't learn to watch out and take care of the little foxes until you've been in the cleft of the rock with him. Until you've heard him say, I want to hear your voice. I want to see your countenance. Oh, darling, I love you with all of my heart. Oh, Lord, make us close enough to you. Draw us close enough to you that we'll want to we'll wanna give you everything we have. Can't get some Baptists to tie their income. But here, everything I've got is yours. Our vines have tender ground. We ought to stop and pray. Every class member, I'm thinking, Lord, show me a little fox in my vineyard. Show me a little sin I need to seize and deal with in my heart and in my life. Let's look at verse 16. I believe she's still talking. My beloved is mine and I am his. He feedeth among the lilies. There are three parts to that verse. My beloved is mine. That's our old standby word for beloved, dode. She loves him with red hot love, boiling hot love. Paul and Peter would use the word fervent love. It's not lukewarm. It's not cold. My beloved is mine. Let me tell you what happened when you got saved. I hope I get a name in here. Jesus moved into your heart. Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, came into your life. My beloved is mine. He has become my, this will be mocked, but I'm going to say it anyway. He has become my personal Savior. He is mine. He is my provider. He is my protector. He is my teacher. He is my Lord. My beloved is mine. I think many a professing Christian anyway lives their life without ever realizing. Fanny Crosby wrote it, Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. If you're not enjoying the fact that Jesus is yours, you're missing a blessing. My beloved is mine, and I am his. Oh, I wish I had longer to talk about this and preach about it. First step of the Christian life, Jesus is mine. Next step of the Christian life, some Christians never fully realize it. I am his. First stage of the Christian life, Jesus is mine. He pays my bills. He keeps me healthy. He meets my needs. He takes care of us in a hundred different ways. All he can do for me. But as we grow, as we mature, it's not just he is mine. Look at the verse. I am his. Lord, can I do something in your family today? Lord, can I give you my tongue today to talk right? Lord, can I give you my mind today? I am it to think right. I am his. And when you get to the place that you're recognizing and living under that situation, he's mine and I'm his, you'll have no trouble saying, and he feedeth among the lilies. Lord, you can drop by my life anytime you want to. Lord, you just come in anytime. If you need to come by my house and look on my bookshelves, it's okay. If you, if you need to go uh, over to the mag magazine rack, it's okay. You just feed among the lilies. And Lord, I'll, I'll do my best to worship you better. I'll do my best to delight in you more and more. Lord, Lord, anything I've got that you want or need, you just say, he feedeth among the lilies. And that word to feed, he pastures among the lilies. He likes to come by my lily patch and see the beautiful lilies. I told you the other day, 
red and white. Red, though your sins be as scarlet, white, they'll be as white as snow. Red and white. The lilies. He comes to faith. He likes seeing how we're living out the grace of God. Verse 17. She has one more request. Until the day break and the shadows flee away. Until the day break and the shadows flee. Preacher, what does that mean? It's more than her glancing at an hourglass or a watch. It's a daybreak. Darkness. Darkness. A darkness that's going to flee, but it is not. Listen to me. We are living right now dispensationally in a time of great darkness in this world. We are living in a time when uh, the prince of this world, the devil, is having his way. That's why we're to go out and shine as lights in the world. It is a dark world. It will be dark for the Christian till Jesus comes again. Uh, till the daybreak and the shadows flee away, turn, my beloved. Turn, my beloved. Here's what, turn. Come back. Come back. Lord, it's dark down here. It's getting more wicked every single day that I live. Lord, 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 you're, you're my Savior. Uh, you're mine and I'm your turn. Come. Come back to get us. It's Revelation uh, 22, 20 writ all over again. Even so, come. Lord Jesus. <laughs> oh, turn. My beloved. And the word there for beloved that she uses is the word for uh, dough again, boiling hot love. She can't get over him. Doesn't want to. Can't get past him. Doesn't choose to. Oh, my beloved, would you turn? Would you come back to get through? And I mentioned this already in the book of the Song of Solomon. There are times of close, intimate presence and there are times of separation. Jesus said to his enemies, nonetheless, when I'm with my disciples, they don't fast. We rejoice. We're together. We have intimacy. It's when I'm gone. It's when I'm away. They'll fast. It's when I'm away that times of intimacy close together, times of separation. Lord, come back. A little time of separation here. She's over yonder in the wilderness, in the desert, among the rock. Come, turn. Oh, my beloved. And be thou like a roe or a young heart. He's called her a dove. Now she calls him a roe or a young heart. Beautiful animals. They're deer. Sure-footed. I can't. I don't have time now to develop it. Sure-footed. Beautiful. Uh, lovely, lovely, uh, clean animals. Uh, animals that are swift as they run and, and, and move. My Savior's sure-footed. He's never fallen. He never will. Be like a roe or a young heart upon the mountains of Bether. The uh, Hebrew word for mountains is H-A-R, har. The word, Greek word, in fact, harmageddon, armageddon is that little word. Come upon the mountains of Bether. And, and let me just tell you what Bether means. It means separation. Separation. Uh, uh, it, Lord, you're over yonder on the other mountain. You've gone back to glory. You're in the Father's house. Mountains of separation. But Lord, I'm asking you, come. Come back and get us. <coughs> Excuse me. Come back and let us spend eternity together when he comes back and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Turn. And my darling, my sweetheart, I'm yours and you're mine in the opposite order. Upon the mountains of even so, come back. And catch us away, Lord Jesus. My, my, my. I came home from the revival last night. I was not feeling well. Got a good bit of congestion. But oh, how I've enjoyed sharing these. A lot of information, a lot of word pictures in our text today. Join us.
next class.